Who the f do you think you are? No, whoa, 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 no, 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 you, you. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to my channel. My name is Amanda. If this is your first time here, welcome to my beauty entertainment channel. Long time no see. And that's the first thing I'll discuss. I don't know. Anyways, so I post when, so in case you're new, I am in medical school. I'm in my second year gearing towards not the finish line, but I have a really big exam in June, eight hours, that that's what I'm currently studying for, plus our current in-house exams. So that's why my posting schedule is very sporadic. I post when I can. I'm not not posting because I don't want to, because I'm lazy, because I am mean with things I've gotten in my DMs. It's not because of that. It's literally because I post when I can. If I could, I would. I have lots of things to say. I would post as much as possible, but I have to have time to plan the video, to film it. I don't have to edit anymore, thank goodness for my editor, but I'm not, not posting because I don't want to. I'll give you an example of what my day looks like. I wake up at about 6, 6.30. Um, I eat my breakfast, I shower, I start working at nine. I finish working studying, meaning that's what my work is, studying. Literally earliest is like 6 to 7 p.m. I finish studying. Latest is like 9 p.m. I finish studying. So by the time I get home, all I really have energy to do is sleep. Is to watch either Modern Family, which I've seen 57 times, or Let's Life Zack and Cody, which I've also seen 57 times. So it's not because I don't want to, it's just because of scheduling purposes and I wait until I have a break in, or some kind of break to be able to film the videos I've been thinking of or planning for for a couple of months now. So that's my little disclaimer. Um, I am busy. I'm not doing, I'm not, it's not, there's no other reason. It's just because I'm busy. So anyways, for example, I finished Degrassi season 12, I think in like January, and I'm now filming this in February. It's just how the schedule ends up working out. I'm a busy person. So speaking of, oh, if you would like to follow me on social media, here's my Twitter and my Instagram. You can check me out on there. I do also post kind of weekly-ish vlogs on my Patreon where I do talk a lot, so. And I like literally film those from my bed <laughs> or from where I'm studying, so a little bit different. So yeah, if you'd like to check those out, you can. The link will be in my description box below. But today we are back again talking about the most dramatic show on the planet. The most dramatic show on the planet by far, Degrassi. We're talking about season 12 which was a journey to say the least. Also, before I start, I used a new brow wax. Usually I use the Anastasia Beverly Hills, the pot brow wax, but I went, I got my brows um, laminated at the Benefit Brow Bar. And she was like, Benefit came out with a new product. They have a brow wax, which is in like the whole like spoolie setup. So I used that today. I really like it. I'm not leaving my house, so I will not know how this wears up, but I did wear it the day that I got my brows laminated a couple months ago. And it seemed to hold up pretty well for everything I had to actually do that day. So I would recommend it and my brows look good. So win-win. Anyways. And I'm gonna be using the Makeup by Mario foundation. Do you see how behind I am? The Makeup by Mario foundation, that was like the thing like two months ago and I'm just using it now. That's, that's, that's kind of how my timeline works. But let's talk about Degrassi. So we're gonna go through every single character. I'm gonna share my opinions and thoughts. And then, yeah, you know how this works. So I think this is the class of 2015, I think. Um, I'm not completely positive, but I think it's Tristan, Maya, Campbell, RIP, that. Okay. First up, we're going to start with Tristan. Tristan has never, ever had a good day ever. Every single time an episode comes on where it's like clear he's going to have a plot line, I have to mentally prepare myself because I know it's about to be something that like no 14 year old should ever, literally ever, ever have to deal with whatsoever. So we start, we start, mind you, the season with him catfishing as Maya. Campbell, Campbell has like, I, he's, 
this this school is on a good environment this school is on a good environment for nobody but it's definitely not for somebody like Tristan like and I know Tristan is young he's in grade nine year nine or whatever Canadians call it so he's young he's just you know like he doesn't know what he's doing but it also Tristan doesn't think ever every idea Tristan has I'm like have you thought for longer than literally three seconds about and the answer is no the answer is no he has not thought about this for longer than three seconds and we see that in the result so like first of all he had one win he had one when he was the lead in the musical and I'm so happy he was able to get that and succeed and it was because of Eli and I'll talk about Eli a little bit later but that was his one saving grace and he almost didn't get to do it almost becky ugh, becky was about to go on instead of tristan because of these wicked 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 hockey souls that about to take tristan's one win away the whole season i was just every time tristan came on it was pity it was pity i felt bad i felt bad because it was ridiculous this boy had a heart attack he literally decided to go on a juice cleanse red flag red flag that was the first red flag and even his friends were like at first but that's why i'm gonna talk about them in a second were like that's not very healthy maya especially was like that's not very healthy but of course tori was like i'll do see i'm gonna talk about her in a second but he had a heart attack who has a <laughs> This show is this show is too much. He literally has never been able to win one day in his damn life. And I'm worried that this is going to continue for the next couple of seasons. And I don't know if my heart can take it because every single time he's like the first person we see, we see a new plot line coming in. I get heart palpitations because no, there is. I can't blame him for having no thought, though, because he's so young. But I'm like, damn. You don't think a thing through. You don't think a thing, a, a damn thing through. Anyways, I have no real opinions on Tristan. I just feel bad for him. <laughs> I just feel bad for him. That's my only thoughts on him. Okay, next up we have Tori. I don't wanna hate a character and I don't hate any, I hate a couple characters, not her. I just don't like Tori. I don't, I think she's a terrible friend. I think she's a terrible friend to both Maya and Tristan, but specifically to Maya. She like, she has her own issues, which I don't know if we're ever going to explore because it's clear that she has like some, some things going on, some things going on. But that whole, she, this is my thing with her friendship, with her friendship with Maya. She thinks Maya is beneath her. She thinks Maya is a loser. Like every one of those plot lines where Maya was like feeling inadequate, was feeling, oh, I'm not grown enough. I'm not this enough. I'm not that enough. And um, Tori would be like, Maya, why are you so insecure? And I'm like, no, it's not because of you, Tori, but you certainly don't. I hope this is the right shade. Oh no. Okay. And I'm like, it's, well, you're not helping. Tori's not helping the situation, in my personal opinion. She is not helping the situation by the way she literally acts whenever Maya has any kind of win whatsoever. Let me, oh, this is too dark. We'll fix it with concealer. Um, That's an interesting smell. Anyways, that whole pageant episode, like I was already really wary. This is so dark. I was really wary of Tori before that pageant episode, but that pageant episode just confirmed everything, literally everything I was already thinking of her. What do you mean you're about to essentially call Maya ugly and say she'll never, ever, ever, ever possibly beat you? Why? Because you're jealous and because you're scared. You're shook and instead of going to work on your craft, instead of going to be like, hmm, Maya seems to be able to do this pretty naturally. Let me go, you know, practice, practice my speech, practice my whatever talent, because we all know Maya, Maya has a talent section on lock. Instead of doing that, you're gonna spend your time trying to make Maya feel worse about herself because she's able to succeed easily in ways that you can't. I can't stand that. I did not like that. And I don't really like her. Now, 
I'm sure she has issues. Like I'm sure she has very, very deep rooted, uh, she's, she's a pageant. I thought they were joking about calling, I thought they were just making fun of her, like just calling her a pageant girl. I did not know that she actually did pageants. So clearly, I mean, if she's a pageant girl that she clearly has issues, but I'm like, I, I don't like the way you treat Maya. I don't like the way you treat her. And for that, I'm access denied. I'm gonna have to say no. I'm gonna have to say I, I don't like it and I don't approve. And like, wh who has Tori helped besides herself in all of season 12? Now, where I am on Tori's side is with Zig. And speaking of Zig, let's just, let's just go straight to Zig. He is raggedy and low down. I'm gonna give him a break. I'll talk about that later, but I'll first start off with saying he is raggedy and low down for what he did to Tori and Maya. First you love Tori, then you don't love Tori, then you love Maya, and then you go out of your way to bother Maya. This is my thing. If you didn't want to be with Tori anymore, you could have just broken up with her, which she ended up doing, but I'm like, you don't need to like nuke Maya's relationship to kind of force her to be with you instead. And that's where I can't tolerate Zig for doing that. What about letting her figuring out on her own and then coming to you? Why did you need to go and try to destroy her relationship because you wanted to speed up the process? This is not a hot pocket. You cannot, this is not rapid fire. You have to wait your turn and that's why I, I can't, I can't fully, I can't fully support their relationship. I, I, I if Maya's happy, fine, um, because it's clearly eventually going to happen, but I just don't like the way this all started. But it's, it's clear that he thinks he's the most important person in the world, and clearly he has issues too. I mean, we got his whole plot line of him kind of having shame of like, everyone in Degrassi is like literally super rich, and he doesn't have that much money, and he has to work and him not, him being embarrassed about like Tori and anything, but he's also another one, just, this is why they're all friends, just like Tristan, who doesn't think a damn thing through. What was the thought process behind dining and dashing? Dining and dashing by yourself, fine, like you're the only person who has to deal with the consequences. Now you're dining and dashing with Tori. How did he, like genuinely, I don't think he was thinking, what did, how did he expect that to go? Especially because all the waiters and waitresses at that restaurant go to his high school. I just, I don't, I don't know. He wasn't thinking. I need to stop asking that question. He wasn't thinking. I understand he felt embarrassed, he felt inadequate, but the worst consequence of like dining and dashing and the worst consequence of stealing the school's money <clears throat> is a lot worse than feeling inadequate. It's expulsion. It's expulsion. That to me is a little bit worse than just feeling embarrassed, which is valid, and inadequate, which, which is valid seeing the people around you. But like he also, him, but this was, this part like him like vandalizing that teacher's car, that was after Campbell. So I will give him a break with that. But all the stuff that was happening before, I was like, so where, how did you think this was gonna go? I would really like to get in the mind of Zig and thinking, where did you think this was gonna go? How did you think you were going to succeed in that? Now speaking of Campbell, not Campbell, but I'll talk about Campbell in a second, but like Zig's relationship with Candle, Campbell, he didn't, <laughs> I know he blames himself and he shouldn't. He really, really shouldn't. And if it wasn't Zig, it would have been a different catalyst. Campbell was suicidal for a most of the entire season, Campbell was suicidal. So it was not his fault. He didn't need to threaten Campbell like that. He didn't need to call Cam a psycho because he wanted his girlfriend. And he knows that, that's why he feels guilty. He's just feeling guilty for the wrong reason. But that's like a suicide education. And his French teacher was clearly very desperately doing her best, trying to help educate him about suicide, trying to be like, it's not your fault. If it wasn't you, it was going to be something else. It's not your, like, it's not, 
Campbell was suicidal. Campbell, it, whether you had yelled at him, whether somebody else had yelled at him, something else would have been the catalyst for that to happen. So it is not technically your fault. But that suicide education with the school doesn't seem to clearly have all that great. Now, he did apologize profusely for this. I mean, it took him nearly destroying his French teacher's car. It took him losing all of his friends, losing all of his friends, for him to, you know, realize, hmm, maybe I should apologize for some of the things that I've done. Maybe I should apologize for kissing Maya, for kissing Maya. And then when Maya was like, I don't want to do this because I don't want to hurt Tori, still trying to pursue her anyway, just violating any kind of boundary, she said, uh, ew. He did apologize. He did apologize. And I will give him credit. This is bare minimum behavior. This is bare minimum behavior, but look at where we are. I have to give credit for bare minimum behavior. A off, a, a deep, a truly awful person would have jumped at the chance to be with Maya, even if it was clear that she was not doing, because Maya is not doing well. A truly awful person would have jumped anyways to the chance to be with Maya, even if it was clear. Him being like, Maya, I don't think you're doing well and being like, I will wait until you're ready. Bare minimum behavior, but a good sign. A sign of me thinking, okay, maybe he's not like a deeply awful, horrible human being. Now, Zig, don't make me regret saying that. Because I know Degrassi. Don't make me regret saying that I don't think you're a truly terrible person. I really don't want him to come back after watching season 13 and have to retract my statement. So I've had to retract a lot of statements about a lot of Degrassi boys. Okay, please don't, please don't make me do that, okay? But it's not your fault that he died. It's not. You didn't cause that. I mean, you didn't directly cause it. You didn't directly cause it. Um, but it wasn't great how you treated Campbell, and it wasn't great how you treated Maya, and it wasn't great how you treated Tori. Who did he treat well? Himself. Actually not, because this was a lot of self-sabotage. This was a lot of self-dining and dashing when the pre- Marisol was the president of the school. You know who she is, and she, I mean, she might not know exactly who you are, but she's seen you in the damn hallway, stealing the school's money. The, no, he he was getting, he was getting desperate. Destroying the friend teacher's car was because he was sad and felt guilty and didn't know who to talk to in the slightest. But it is not your fault that Campbell died. Zig, I'm talking to a fictional character, but it's not your fault. Speaking of Campbell, this was just a travesty. This was a travesty for many reasons, but fundamentally, was it Campbell Sanders or Saunders? He was failed. He was failed by nearly every, it's so crazy how this all, it's a bunch of children blaming themselves for his death when he was failed by every single adult involved in his life. He never had a chance. If you go to my Degrassi live tweet thread, because I'm an adult, I can recognize oppression in children. Campbell was depressed the first, what, what is that called? When a character first showed up on a show. He was depressed the second he showed up on the show. He was already depressed. He was already depressed. He was, oh, first of all, first of all, he moved across the country to come join a, ran, a, a very good hockey team, but he had to come to a different, a completely different school away from his entire family. He came onto the show depressed, completely alone, and trying to find a lifeline. He was trying to find a reason to stay alive from his first day on the show, and he found that in Maya. And then that was cut, shattered, and destroyed and it wasn't completely Zig's fault, but Zig was the final in like cutting off that lifeline. Now he feels like he has no reason to live anymore. 
In literally episode, I wrote down episode 13, he cries out for help to his mother. Now, I don't know his mother. I don't know his parents. I don't know if she just didn't realize, if she just was not aware of what depression would look like in her son. I don't know if she didn't care because Campbell was their cash cow. I don't care. I don't know. I don't know what the reason was, but it was obvious. It was, if it wasn't obvious before episode 13 that Campbell was depressed, it was clear after when he was telling his mom, I am sad. I am alone. I feel, I feel, I feel like I have nothing to live for. First of all, he's, he's lactose intolerant, I think, and he's ch ch chugging milk to avoid playing hockey, self-harm. He's literally cutting himself, self -harm. This This boy was failed because nobody, nobody seemed to realize. And I'm not saying he needs to be like, oh, he's vomiting and now you have to go interrogate him to figure out why he was vomiting. But I'm like, has he ever been sick before? Have you ever seen, even Maya, the child was like, what's that cut on your arm? What are you doing? She was the one. And this is why like her reaction was extra sad because she noticed a lot of these things, but because she's also so a kid has no idea what to do with it and no idea what it means. But she noticed more than any other adult on this show. And that's the shit I can't stand. That's what I can't stand. Like Maya is not equipped to treat depression. She's not equipped to do depression. Like none of them are. Like they're they're in the ninth grade. Like the adult, a kid moves across the country to play hockey by himself. His teammates bully him all the time because he's better than all of them. Nobody seems to like him. Nobody seems to respect him. And it's a recipe for disaster. He has to lie to his team to learn to have fun with his friends to feel alive essentially. Like, him jumping off the catwalk to purposely break his arm is when I recognized that he was suicidal. Before that, it was clear depression. The cutting himself was like self-harm behavior. We're teetering into, into, into that. We're getting very, very close. Him jumping off the catwalk, that's, this is where I really think that intervention should have happened because I'm not saying like, you know, he just broke his arm and you don't have to interrogate him while he's laying on the floor in pain. Like, how did you break your arm? But I'm wondering to all the adults and the teachers, how do you think he broke his arm in the middle of an empty hallway? How, like, can, can anybody, can anybody walk me through the thought process of that? How do you think he just broke his arm in the middle of an empty hallway? Can it, can, uh, can I have an, even an, a little bit of insight into, it was an empty hall. There was nobody else in the hallway. And I don't know if the school has cameras. DeGrasse is a big school. They ought to have cameras. Nobody wanted to look at the footage. Nobody wanted to see how a he there was nobody else in the hallway to break his arm. I mean, he could have tripped and fallen, but to break his old arm because Campbell jumped off that like pushed himself off that catwalk. He could have died from that too. He could have very well died from that too. Um, he could have very 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 well died from that too. But he didn't care. And that's where I'm like he an inter that was I don't want to say the golden opportunity for an intervention, but it was the most obvious place for an intervention. And that he, like, that was hard. Him jumping off the balcony to avoid playing ho hockey was heartbreaking because I was like, it's not it's over, but if someone doesn't intervene right, like now in these next couple of episodes, it's over. And I watched and nobody did. And so every time Campbell got a plot line, I was just in a pure state of panic because I was like, I know I'm waiting for the shooter drop. I know it's coming. I know it's coming because, well, one, because I'm an adult and I can like, I'm not, I don't have a degree in psychology or anything. I like concentrated in psychology, but I don't, I don't have a degree in psychology or anything. I'm not a psychologist, but being able to recognize that depression looks like in a child, like I can do that. I was on edge being like, I hope this episode doesn't have a Campbell centered plotline. I hope this episode doesn't have a Campbell. I don't want it to happen. And then when it finally did happen, I was like, oh shit.
He was failed. He was failed. He was failed. And I know the school was busy. I know. What's his name? Fuck. The principal. Mr. Simpson. I know he's busy and I know he's stressed. This school, there's no way he's not. But nobody even wanted to be like, how did he break his arm in the middle of a hallway? Nobody wanted to look in. I know they probably didn't have time, but I'm like, uh, I just think he was failed. And it was a heartbreak. It was heartbreaking. It was a good, my only issue with like the, a lot of the things, but I mean, they were, people do think those things about people who are suicidal, um, like thinking suicide is selfish and stuff. I wish the show hadn't done that, but I'm like, it's a, people do say that about people who um, do die by suicide. So, so, but in summary, R.I.P. Campbell, Degrassi does a lot of talks about, because I don't, I think the first like discussion of suicide was 13 reasons why that I saw as a kid was that uh, you can I'm sure you can imagine that that was not that was not a good start that was not a good introduction to what that was and Grassy did it a little bit better okay so I'm sad for Campbell and I'm sad I am sad okay I'll talk about Maya next I'm very very sad for Maya because Oof. So Maya suffered. Maya is just suffering the whole, the whole damn season. She's suffering. First of all, Maya, her, all of her storylines like center. She doesn't feel good enough for any, and she is so talented. She is so gifted at the things that she does. She comes in literal, like music prodigy, can already do everything, does not feel challenged in any of her, in her music class whatsoever. And she just feels, but she still feels completely inadequate in every single other thing that she does. And she's not crazy in thinking this. Everybody else makes her feel inadequate too, including her own friend, including her own best friend. She struggles with feeling like nothing she does is good enough and she's never fitting in i have a theory i think she's neurodivergent that's my that's my theory as to why she like her and cam like made up broke up like 15 different times and it's simply because he's too depressed to do anything with her but of course maya doesn't know that she's not a child psychologist how would she know that but it is interesting because she does pick up on those things but because she's also 14 15 i don't know what is she going to do with that information? Does she know what that information even means? No, because why would she? Hello? That's why the adults could have stepped in. What made me like so sad is how her coping mechanism was to like completely blame Cam and that's not solving a damn thing and I'm not sure when she will fully realize that she started to kind of but I need her to have the full realization that like blaming him is not gonna make it hurt any less any any blaming him is not gonna make it hurt any less it doesn't help that most of the people at this school seem to be taking the suicide as selfish route that's not helping matters in the, like nobody thought twice about every fine fine it's realistic but like uh, uh, i was just like at that vigil i was just i was in shock but i was also like she is so deeply hurt and her trying to be like i'm fine i'm fine i don't care he's not it's not affecting me why would i let him affect me it was it was it was beyond tragic because she was very clearly in so much pain and has no idea what to do with it no idea how to even recognize that she's in pain has no idea how to deal with it and takes it out on the person who's no longer there which is i don't want to say the easy route because but like he's not there anymore he's not there anymore and then so we that happens to her that happens to her people start looking at her weird treating her all type of differently and like somebody like maya really doesn't want in my like in my like doesn't like to be treated differently, doesn't like people to act differently around her, doesn't like people to pity her. It was just, it was just a failed recipe. And then we have that very, very strange, but not completely out of left field, like weird, like making out on camera video thing that I don't know 
who those two people were. I didn't know they went to this damn school, but those two people, first of all, recording somebody who you know is in a very vulnerable state like that, they're both sinister. I don't know who the fuck they are, but whoever the two of them are, are wicked. Um, and then the her, I thought she was going to like bomb the audition. Maya, no, Maya can, what, one thing Maya can do is play that damn cello. Them bringing it up, like I'm sitting there and I, it's just shattering my heart. I'm happy towards like the end of the season, Maya was like, I like reached out to them, told them because I'm like, you need to tell them what happened to you. This is not something that needs to be like withheld because you're gonna be, you are suffering. You are suffering on your own and I would hate for you to miss out on the opportunity you've always dreamed of because, and again, where are the adults? Like Katie, her older sister just kind of yelled at her and was like, you're crazy. Why do you want to date somebody else? That's weird. That's not helpful. That, but Katie is Katie. We're going to get to her in a second. Where are the adults? Where, what's, what's, what's going on? I don't want to make her go to therapy, but I'm like, y'all had a grief counselor for like a day. What's, what's happening here? Degrassi needs an overhaul needs an overhaul. They just need mental health counselors there permanently. The kind of things that happen at the school, they need somebody there permanently because this is really scary. But I really like Maya. She's one of my favorite characters. I think she's sweet. I think she's like misunderstood. And I think she doesn't understand herself fully. And that's why a lot of these things happen. And I don't think she's in tune with herself as a person, which is what happens when you're like 14, 15 years old. But I just, she's gonna be fucked up for life unless she like, even if she does talk to somebody she's still gonna be fucked up for life from this happening to her and that just breaks my heart to witness especially other people just like like this is why I go back and forth whether I like Marisol or not I want to because you know but why are you making fun of a dead boy like why are you making fun of like a dead per why are you doing that why is are you your seniors why are you making fun of somebody like that what, like ugh, ugh. so i don't really know if i like marisol <laughs> i don't really know because but i do i'll talk about her later i'm not talking about her right now anyways that's it for the class of 2015 i'm pretty sure that's class 2015 because they're freshmen still right i don't know i don't i don't know Anyways, next up we have the class of 2013. Where's my water? I'm thirsty. So, I'm not gonna talk about everybody. Like I know there's people on the hockey team, like Luke, Becky's brother. I don't, I don't feel he's an important enough character to discuss. I think he's a terrible person, all that we've seen of him. So what else am I supposed to say? Dallas. Hmm. I have a feeling I will end up liking Dallas um, because now, like, knowing a little bit more about him, I can see why he acts like that. But Dallas is a very, very angry person. He's a very, very angry and he's very angry at the world. You have a crush on Katie that she likes Jake instead. You destroy their entire garden. Then you get beat up by a theater kid and an environmentalist. <laughs> There's that. But I, 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 I see why. Being a father that young, I can see why he's a little bit angry at the entire world, but I feel like there's more to that. I hope like he get, we get to flesh out like who he is a little bit more because I'm like, it can't just be that. Like, and this is why, like he, he was about to not see his child, the child he had a part in making to go on a date with Allie. That's unserious. That's, if I yelled at KC for doing very similar unserious things, Dallas, you have to take it too. You have to because that was deeply unserious. <sighs> like I get he wants to be a normal teen. He wants to have a normal life. But I think he finally realized he you can't do that because guess what? Your ex-girlfriend definitely does not have that option. Gag, let's, let's, let's talk about that. Let's talk about the fact that he got to move 
I don't know how far he moved, but he gets to go to high school. He gets to play on a hockey team because his ex-girlfriend does not have the option of being able to live her life because it is her responsibility, despite two people being involved in making the child, it is on her to take care of that baby. And it seems like he's like, he realized that over the course of the season. Um, sad it took that long because I just really feel bad for her because she doesn't get to go to high school. She doesn't get to explore her interests. She doesn't get to potentially become, I mean, he's not gonna be a famous hockey player because he's not that good. He said it so himself, <laughs> but I feel like there's something more to why he's so mad. And I think the more I learn about him, the more I will understand him and I will like him. But the whole literal first five, six of this season, no. Why are you so mad all the time? Why are you so angry? All and why are you taking down everybody else? Why you gotta ruin everybody? The only time I was, I liked what Dallas was doing was when he was with Allie. And I will discuss that in a little bit because you might be surprised, but I genuinely enjoyed that entire plot line and I will tell you why in a second. Next up, we have Connor. I want everybody else to leave Connor alone. And this is, he got bullied all, so let's call a spade a spade. They made every time he was on the screen, everybody was making fun of his literal autistic traits. That's that's what that was. Let's, that's, that's all that was, that was the whole season. That was the whole season. They were there just bullying him because he was autistic and they knew that, they've known that this whole time. Like Claire, don't, I, she's on, um, hey, she really, Claire really, get, just like Darcy, really just giving me a headache because something horrible happens to her and I'm like, damn, that shouldn't happen. Then she goes and does something horrible to somebody. I, I can't with her. I don't want Jen on him. In, I, I, that needs to end immediately. That needs to end immediately. I don't know what Ed, the writers are currently thinking, but I need you to stop having these thoughts because who has Jenna ever treated well? Who has Jenna ever treated well? Becky. Becky the bigot. She for she cause she she forgave all of all of Becky's sins almost immediately. This, this was even before Becky like started apologizing for stuff. She didn't mind all of Becky's sins, but fucks over every other person on the show. Except Casey. Casey, yeah, we've already we've all, we 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 you can go watch my last video for my just my thoughts on Casey. But I need Jenna to get away from Connor. I need Jenna to I need Jenna to get away from Connor and I need them all to leave him alone. You know he's autistic. So what 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 what's all this hoopla around him acting like an autistic person? Hate that. Next up is Casey. I liked Casey this whole season, all 10 seconds of him being here. He found a hobby that wasn't harassing Jenna. He apologized for harassing Jenna. He apologized for, he literally was just trying to guilt her into like giving up her life again for him to again, not take care of the kid. That was what, that's what, that's what was gonna happen. That was what was gonna happen. He was going to harass Jenna into taking the kid back to again, not take care of the child. However, I hated the way things ended for Casey. I hated that. I hated that. I feel so bad. He didn't deserve that ending at all. I don't know if like the actor had to leave or like whatever, but he did not deserve that ending at all. He was doing so well. He finally found a passion in life. He finally was like, I'm going to be smart. Cause he was smart when he came on the show and then spent his smartness harassing Jenna. And then he has to leave because of his bum ass father. I can't, that really made me so mad. And I'm on KC's side. He didn't deserve that. He didn't deserve that. At least now he gets to be like safe. And the, the thing is though, the fact that he has to be the adult, that he has to say, mom, we're moving. It's just, he don't deserve this. He don't deserve this at all. And I wish he, we could have seen him like graduate because like, mm, you know, we went like this, we could have seen this and now we don't get to because of his bum ass father. I hope he's in prison. I hope he, I'm not an abolitionist on it when it comes to TV. I hope he's in prison. 
I hope he's rotting in prison, coming and banging down the door, trying to give Casey's mom wine. So I was really sad when he left. Like, and I did not anticipate being that sad, but I was like, and for, for, for something that's not even his fault, something that shouldn't be his problem, but he has to step up a 17 year old, I don't know how old he was, stepping up to be the adult in the situation. He didn't deserve that at all. He didn't deserve that. I, I, I'm actually very sad. Cause I was like, damn. Cause I, remember, you can go watch my last video. I tore Casey to shreds, but I'm a fair person. Nobody deserves that. Nobody deserves that, okay? Okay, next up, I think Becky's in their class. Becky. I know Becky is a child and I know Becky is a product of her environment. I do know that. I do, I just can't with her. I can't. I can't support her. I cannot support her and Adam. I can't. I'm vehemently against that. And it's not necessarily because of her. It's because of her parents and the environment that they have invited. Her parents are wicked human beings, full stop. Full stop. Becky bringing Adam there was a deep risk, was very risky and very like reckless on Becky's part because she knows how like, what if they had physically like harmed, I mean, they psychologically harmed Adam, but like the, the risk was so great and the reward was not good enough. I'm sorry, like uh, their love uh, to risk Adam's safety like that. I did not like, I did not, I did not like that at all. I know she wants to be happy and I'm happy. She wants to be happy. She wants to be happy with Adam. She wants to date Adam, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. That was not safe. That was not safe. And that was reckless. You know who your parents are. You know how they are. That's why you, when Jenna told you about, at first of all, Jenna just airing out Adam's business like that. But when Jenna told you your reaction, cause you learned that from your parents, you're going on a whole anti-gay tirade about the musical, but want to just bring Adam into your, like it, it, it was, it was a little bit unserious to me, but the bigger issue is her parents. Her parents trying to tr essentially trick her and it worked on Becky, her and Adam into conversion therapy. That's what that was. Was, and I can't get angry at her or get upset with her for falling victim to that. She's being manipulated and played by her parents and it's sick that they don't care about her happiness because clearly Adam does make her really, really happy. And her parents are like, we really don't give a fuck. We have a status quo to uphold. Them using a religion she clearly desperately believes in to twist her arm and to mind, she's already gonna be fucked up from, I am not saying all religious people, I'm not saying religion will fuck you up. I am saying a lot of the ways that people use religion, specifically Christianity, can fuck up a lot of children's lives. Becky was going to be fucked up regardless. Going to conversion therapy, because of her feelings towards her boyfriend. Ooh, it's a, it's a wonder she was able to like kind of break out of that and apologize to Adam by doing the whole like dressing up as jewels. It's, oh, it's a literal miracle that she was able to go down that route instead of going deeper and deeper and further down into it. But I still worry because at the end of the day, Becky has been, I don't want to say indoctrinated, but essentially by her parents and by her parents' way of life. It's going to be much easier for her to get sucked back into that by her parents than to like forget it and continue and look at her like admir like her love for Adam as more important than that because those are her parents. And that's why it's extra sick because they know that. They know that them being her parents and her clearly being taught your parents way or the highway is going to like limit and it still be in the back of her mind the entire time she's with Adam. And I don't, that's why I don't like that. That's why I don't like that. And that's why I can't support that. If Adam's happy, fine, but this is not safe. It's not safe because to, in order for it to be safe, Becky would have to be willing to entirely cut off her parents. First of all, she's in high school. She can't do that currently. And two, 
will she? If it comes down, because we she was forced to that decision and she, your parents were at him. Now, towards the end of the season, she like, they like, are like together now and whatever. And they had to go through a whole lot to get there. But I'm like, that will come up again. Her parents will give her some sort of ultimatum. It's either us or Adam. And I'm not saying she's like a terrible person for picking her parents because that's what she's been, that's what she's been taught to do. But it's only, it's only, the only like Becky's obviously going to be hurt in this situation, but Adam is the victim. Adam is the victim. Becky's a victim in terms of manipulation, but the way that she, I mean, she went out of her way to say all this ridiculous, all this homophobic, all this transphobic. She went out of her way to do that, but she was taught it. And that's what's really, really sick. They really don't care about the fact that like their daughter is like happy. They really, really don't care. And it's just so like, ugh. It's so interesting to me that Jenna like just didn't give a fuck <laughs> about any of the things Becky was saying before. Mm -hmm. Anyways, but because Becky didn't judge her. I'm going to talk about Jenna later. Let me not do that. But Becky didn't judge Jenna. So Jenna doesn't care that Becky judging other people. That's why I don't like Jenna. So I don't like Jenna. Anyways, next up is Adam. I just feel so sorry for Adam. There's no win. He didn't win once this season. I guess him getting together with Becky was supposed, to be, was supposed to be the win. Uh-uh. First, Becky enrolls herself in conversion therapy. Uh, not of her own free volition. To rid herself of feelings for Adam. Then he meets this girl at the Battle of the Bands and goes on a date with her. Puts a cucumber in his pants and it falls out in front of her. Then the girl he thought liked him just ended up wanting, just was trying to play him and just wanted to know what song they're singing for the Battle of the Bands. And gave some, just some half, I wasn't, I wouldn't call that an apology. Like just gave some half ass reasoning away saying you're easy to play. There, Adam had absolutely, there was no win in this situation. Like, and I just, I don't like how the end result of that plot line was, well, let me just go back to Becky because I really do love her and I'm just trying to heal my, the pain that she caused me with these other people. That could possibly be true and I'm sure that was true, but I'm just like, there's hurt for you either way. There's hurt for you either way. And Becky has to be very, very willing to abandon something she has been taught and it's not saying that she can't she could she very well could but Adam is going to get hurt he already has been hurt several times in the process and that just makes me sad this is a, it's just a terrible situation it's just a terrible situation um I'll do Jenna next unserious since day one. Uh, Jenna has been unserious since day one, still has been unserious. Her new best friend is Becky, enough said. Got baptized for a boy, enough said. That's a new low for Jenna, and that's saying something. Even, the th that, that, that's what was funny about that scene, because she became self-aware, because it was a new low, even for her. She was like, damn, I got baptized for a boy's attention? I was like, you, let's look in the mirror, Jenna. Let's look in the mirror and figure out why the hell that was. Let's figure out why that was. She's mean to Connor. I don't like that. They're all mean to him, but she's constantly yelling at him for acting like an autistic person. I don't like that. I don't like that at all. And I don't like Jenna. I don't like Jenna. I don't like Jenna. So that, there's that. I have nothing else to say. What else does she do this season? Run around with Becky. Okay. <sighs> Moving the hell on. Moving the hell on. Oh, I spilled my foundation. No, let me drink water before this next. <sighs> I said I didn't hate any character. I lied. Dave. When will you find a job? 
When will Dave find something to do? When will Dave find, maybe his passion now will be acting. I would like Dave to find anything to do except harassing Ali. Seems like him and KC were actually bestianas because when one stops, another one starts. Where is your real hobby? I have been sick of him since he cheated on Allie after professing his love for her and begging her to be with him because he felt, I have worked on myself for you. I have done all this stuff to, so that I can deserve you and then goes and cheats on her literally three months later. I've been sick of him since then. This season, it's solidified. I, I, he's lost me completely. He's lo where is the redeeming qualities in Dave? Where, 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 where is the redeeming? I can't. I'm being harsh because I really, I do not like the way he spoke to Ali at all this season. What was great, he worked through his homophobia this season he worked through it was like it was pretty like real it was realistic it was reasonable Eli really was helping half the damn cast with all their issues even though he had so many issues this season but he worked through that it took you know it was like pulling teeth but he worked through that my issue with Dave is that he's a bitter and he never wants to admit that he's bitter and that really pisses me off. I understand being sad that Allie's gonna graduate early, like she's gonna leave you, like I understand being sad. Being bitter? Being bitter that she got a good, uh, I don't think it's a good opportunity. I don't think fast tracking any high schooler to a program like MIT is good for their mental health. That's besides the point. It's a good opportunity in theory. He was bitter the entire, she told you, I have to finish the 11th grade and 12th grade in like six months. What part of that made you think she has the time to, 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 to really, to really put me first? Let's, let's use, let's use our noggin here and figure this out like, like we have neurons firing inside our skull. Let's, mm, like D Dave feels like he is owed Allie. Dave feels like he, I have survived. I have persevered. I did this. <coughs> I have mistreated this person. He feels like he's owed Allie because he's done. What has he done? I don't know. I don't know what Dave has done, but he thinks he's done something. He thinks he's done something in that the something that he's done is enough and that he is owed Allie despite cheating on her literally 15 seconds ago. And this is the reason why, the only reason why Dave got excited at the possibility of Allie being pregnant. They don't want no kid. Dave does not want a kid. Dave does not want to take care of a kid. Dave does not want to be a father. I call bullshit on all of that. He likes the idea of keeping Allie. Where do they live? I don't know what, what town this is. He wants to keep Allie there by force. It's so sad because he doesn't want her to like stay because she wants to, stay because he loves him. He wants her to have no option but to stay with him. And that's what makes him deeply unserious. This makes me so mad. The things he said to her after she was like, well, I can always get an abortion. No, any little bit of grace I was giving him up that literally disintegrated into ash because who says you're the most important person in the world? Who died and made you king? Who died and who died and made you the ruler of all? Who died and let you even have a say in this situation? You call her a, a, essentially a terrible person because she wants to have an abortion. Again, what is your relevance in this decision? If Allie doesn't want, even if Allie is not, is not gonna go to MIT, she has every right to say, no, I do not want a baby, so I'm going to get an abortion. And you have, you, about it. <clears throat> about it. 
I need them to be over officially. I need this last breakup to be it. I I don't have I don't have the headspace to deal with this again. I need him to find maybe acting. Maybe he really wants to be an actor. Fine. Find a fucking hobby and leave Allie alone. He's just dragging her down. He's he's just he's just dra and not even to a good place to a shitty place because again he cheated on her he she this is what I, I really need to reiterate this he said I've been working to make myself good enough for you I'm pretty sure that's a direct quotation I felt like I didn't deserve you before but I have been working on myself to be worthy of deserving you and then went and cheated on her 15 seconds after. Unserious from the very, very, very start. And I need this to be there. Cause when I um, uh, write my notes for this video, I go on the Degrassi wiki just to read the summaries of each episode. And have, in like the trivia section, it'll say like, this marks the end of Blank and Blank's third relationship or second relationship. I need this to be the last one. I need this to be the last one for my own sanity, but for Allie's sanity too. She can't keep dealing with this. She can't keep dealing with this. Imagine you're trying to study, you're trying to finish 11th grade and 12th grade in five months. And here comes Dave. What about me? What about me? What about me? What about you? What did you think fast tracking entailed? Do you think it entailed lots of free time to spend with my boyfriend? And even when she like tried to make effort to be like, I can't be there, but I can do this. I can text you and said I can do, I can let you know that I still care about you, obviously, but I can't be there. There he goes throwing a literal hissy fit again because it's not exactly what Dave wants. But what has Dave done for Allie? What has Dave done for Allie? Nothing. The answer is nothing. And I can't, I can't stand him. I'm sorry. I, if he finds a hobby and finds something else to do, maybe I can grow to tolerate him. But as of right now, I no, it's done. It's done. <sighs> and that is why I supported Allie in Dallas. I don't like Dallas, um, but he was, he was there to serve a purpose not to act like him, himself. He was there to serve a purpose, to let Allie have fun for once in her life. I need this to be their last relationship. I don't have the headspace to deal with this for another season. I'm done. Allie has been through fucking, what was his name, Johnny De Who fuck? She already had to tolerate him literally messing with her brain from the jump. And now she has to deal, then Drew, then Drew. And now she has to deal with you. When will Allie be allowed to survive? Once we get rid of all the men. Once we get rid of all the boys. That's when. That's when. Moving on before I, my blood pressure raises a little bit too much. Next on to Claire. Ooh. Claire was, Claire also could not, she is really Darcy's sister. She could not catch a break this whole season. First off, Asher. So he's in hell. Um, I don't know, I don't, I don't know where, he, I, don't, I don't know, I, I don't know, but he's not, he's in hell. Um, he might be alive, but he's in pseudo hell then. Um, it's so interesting watching a show like Degrassi as an adult because there are so many things that I'm like you pick up on so much quicker because I'm like if I was a kid I wouldn't necessarily have done that. The second he said she was so mature for her age I said w w w my sirens were 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 and I was already on edge because of Miss O and Sav that we <sighs> I was on edge. Then he's offering her alcohol she's in high school i don't know about the laws in canada but i know that's illegal <laughs> like as an adult i got those red flags i mean the relationship was never appropriate from the jump the relationship was never keeping a minor that late in your office it was never appropriate from a jump this happening to anyone would fuck them up this happening to claire is and she she really really tried to like air him out like she just she just didn't understand the dynamics of like the real world and like the office and everything but I applaud Claire for being so like 
I'm gonna deal with this right now the way she dealt with it was it was not her fault but just it was it was it was it was it was, a, it was terrible from the jump her not telling Eli was a whole whirlpool of a disaster leading into her getting drunk with Dallas of all people in the middle of the fucking school day like that was that was her lowest point and that wasn't even her fault this man tried to ruin her life this man almost succeeded in ruining her life because and him talking about I'm so stressed I'm going through a divorce that causes you to try to make moves on a child the stress of your divorce leads you to try to forcibly kiss a 17 year old. I, I stress has made me do lots of things. It 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 it, 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 it has it has never it has never ever ever been that. It has never ever 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 been that. Like all of the place where she went to go work, there is no, there is no way that they thought everything in the milk was clean with Asher. There is no way they haven't at least heard rumors about him and his interns. Like there's, I, him, there's no way they didn't know that. And Claire was also failed by lots of different people. Like her thinking, her feeling like I need to get revenge on him so bad because thinking that would help her heal when it, was not that was not gonna help her heal whatsoever like her almost resorting to essentially planting child pornography on his phone or computer Claire just needed someone to talk to like Claire just needed somebody to help and her like refusing like Allie is not she's your age she cannot help you with that but she didn't want to bother nobody she didn't want to bother Eli she didn't want to bother Miss O like ah. Oh. This is Darcy's little sister. This is, this is, it, it's, 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 even if you didn't, it didn't, if you didn't know, like, you know, this is clearly Darcy's little sister. Like, and then we end the season with the cancer scare. We end, we end the season with a cancer scare. She lost the school presidency and then we end with a cancer scare. When will Claire catch a break? Never, never. The, an the answer is, is never because this whole, this, it was not Claire's season. It was not Claire's season at all. She was just suffering the entire damn time. It's tragic. Next up, we have Allie, my queenie, still to this day forever. The genius, the resident genius. Like, but let's discuss my issues with the MIT thing. I do not think, I don't, I think as of now, it doesn't seem like she's gonna do it, and I don't think that she should. I do not know if this is a, because I know people do fast track through high school. It is, there's no way. Like the fact that, like, I don't know how, like her taking those pills that Dallas told, first of all, Dallas telling her about those pills, ugh. Like that was not a surprise because I was like, there is no way she's going to be able to finish 11th grade and all of 12th grade in a couple of months without like using drugs there was no way and if you have to use drugs to finish something it is too much it's pushing your body too much and I under it was a great opportunity for her but I'm like at what cost and even the people who offered this to her like you want somebody that burnt out coming to work with you someone who went to a, a child having to do all that work that quickly that's kind of, and you're offering them next to no help. Once the MIT people came, we never saw them again. You're offering her no help. There wasn't even like, you don't need to take these classes, you don't need to take these, it, there wasn't none of that. She was essentially on her own and it took her crashing her car for her dad to be like, hmm, maybe too much pressure on a child. <laughs> and this is why I liked the Dallas Alley plotline. I did, I did, I don't like Dallas. I don't like, I don't, I, 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 as of right now, I don't like him. I like that plot line simply for the reason because he showed Allie fun. Fun, I mean, he's not a great person, but compared to her last, her last slew of boyfriends, the best depiction of fun, genuine fun and joy, which is so sad, but it's so looking i mean it's clear with with who who has tortured her essentially in the past that 
I mean, Dallas is, it's, it's, he's like this much better, but that's still better. That's what I just wanted her to have fun. And that's why I fully supported that plot line. It was fun. I just hate how it was how she discovered those pills. There's no winning for Allie. She'll have some fun, but then she discovers there's pills she can take that will mess up her head. It, there, there was no winning there, but I appreciated give her even getting the opportunity to enjoy her life for like two days for like two days before she crashed her car but getting to enjoy her life in the slightest <sighs> in the slightest i hope she doesn't go down my tea i don't think it's safe and i don't think it's healthy for her to go um so i hope she's not going because it, it was kind of ambiguous how that ended she told her dad i don't think i can go which i took as i'm not going but i'm not like for sure certain if that was actually going to happen Okay, now we're gonna talk about the class of 2012 slash kind of 2013 because some of these people are not gonna graduate with these people, but I wanted to include them in where they originally started. Did I? Okay, I thought I lost my brush. Anyways, we're first gonna start off with Owen. Still on this show for some, some unbeknown reason to me. Still on this show, still a nuisance. He finally stood up for his brother after how many episodes of him joining in on berating Tristan. First of all, we didn't even know they were siblings because he was so ashamed of Tristan being his blood-related sibling. But he finally, you know, stood up for his brother after his brother was nearly tortured by his hockey friends. So, a win? Anyways, next up is Drew. <sighs> okay. So Drew last season and a little bit into this season wanted to eat his cake and have it too. That was in summary Drew's whole plot line last season mostly, but also a little bit at the beginning of this season. He should have broken up with Katie. He actually should have never dated Katie because he was in love with Bianca the entire time. The entire, like the entire time he was in love with Bianca. Like it, 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 he should have never, he should have broken up with Katie like, and, but he should have never dated Katie because it was clear to everyone, including Bianca and including Katie, that he was in love with Bianca the entire time. So Drew dropping out of high school, I don't blame him for that, especially the way his mom talks to him and like treats him. But I am happy that he decided to go back. I just, I, I think had it had his mother spoken to him differently had his mother you know not done things the way she did i know why she did but it, it clearly it didn't work clearly it didn't work and it wasn't working but she kept doing it i just don't think that needed to have happened i don't think it needed to have happened. i don't think he needed they he felt like he was stupid and he was made to feel like he was stupid because he had concussions he had injuries he but then he started mma fighting and you know kept getting more injured whatever 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 I'm happy that he's back, that he's back. I just think had his mother not acted like that, he wouldn't, cause he did it to purely rebel against her and to prove something. He wouldn't have felt the need to prove anything had his mother not acted like that. But that's not the re true reason why I don't like his mom. I'll talk about when I get to Bianca. Um, he needs a high school degree. Like he, I don't, he doesn't know what he wants to do. He's not interested in a trade as of like right now he needs a high school degree and i was worried that he was gonna just like go to whatever college town bianca was going to and just be there and be miserable and make bianca miserable and i can't stand that i can't stand that so i'm happy that he you know and is like i'm gonna go back to school but his mother is a bother and a helicopter mom and drew's rebellious and stubborn it was it was just but he has a better excuse he's in he's a high schooler he has a better excuse for acting the reason why he does. His mom does not. Anyways, at least he got a job. He got a job and did something with his life. That's why I'm no longer angry at him and Bianca, like, the being together. I just wanted to make sure he was good enough for Bianca. End of story. End of story. And Bianca's happy, so I'm happy. So I'm happy. And I like Drew now. I think he's funny. I think he's funny. I think the things he said to Claire were pretty funny. <laughs> Because Claire and I don't get along. Um, some of them were rude. So some of it was a little rude. And her, him essentially calling her a square with no life. Pretty rude. But true. Sorry. Sorry to Claire. But, um, yeah. I think he's funny. 
and I'm interested to see how he served because none of not he's not friends with the people in his like he's not friends with the people in the class that he's joining with so I'm interested to see how this is going to go for him now that same with Imogen I'm really intrigued at how this is going to go for the both of them um but the engagement I've given up on being upset about the fact that they're engaged and and got and are married like I, I and are like I'm upset about did they end up getting married in Vegas or did they I think they waited see I keep I forget everything but I'm less angry about that now if Bianca's happy I'm happy uh so and Drew seems to now recognize that responsibility is something he needs to have in order to live so as long as he keeps going on that path I'm fine with it Bianca's queenie so if she's happy I'm happy look how far we've come look how far we've come so I actually don't mind Drew now like he still had asked for everything he did to everybody else before, but I don't mind him now. Um, he's less like, and maybe it's because he's been literally physically injured so much, but he's less like that now and seems to recognize that he needs to become a responsible human being, which is a plus, but Bianca also helped him do that. Bianca has done so much charity work, has done so much charity work, okay? Next up, we have Imogen, my sister. I love her. First off, her mom is wicked. Her Now she's taken her in, which is the very least she could do for Imogen, but Imogen was caring for her dad all on her own. And when we find out that Imogen's mom was taking her dad to all these appointments, you knew he had dementia and you still have Imogen living with him by himself. That is so weird to me. That is so, she's a child and now her dog is dead because you didn't, like you, you are taking him to these appointments. You know he has dementia and he's still living with his 17 year old daughter who's his sole care caretaker. That was deeply unserious to me, but it resolved itself. Now someone's taking care of him. There's no sense in that. Like all, all those big brain medical degree and you have no sense. It doesn't make any sense to me. Now Imogen can't graduate. I just, I don't, they, they always put the like sapphic people in some absolute bullshit to just end their relationships. Like, uh, what do you, what do you, what do you mean? I mean, it makes sense. Imogen has been through like, I, I also, I don't think she would have been able to graduate, but her, I mean, her dad, she almost didn't do the play, which she was super interested in because of her dad. Like it, it was just a lot. The silver lining is we get Imogen for another season, but the way this all happened was so disrespectful. So not only does she not able to graduate, she ends the season by, so she didn't, I thought she was just gonna trash talk Fiona. I thought she was gonna not give Fiona the message about the designer. She impersonated Fiona, pretending to be drunk. Fiona's a recovering alcoholic. She impersonated Fiona drunk to try to sabotage her chance. Why did that have to happen? I, cause I'm like, oh, she's gonna just not tell Fiona about the mess, about the call. She went to the literal worst possible choice. She went to that choice. They know that was unnecessary. Imogen's dramatic. She's not that dramatic. She's not, she's not, she's not that dramatic. She's dramatic. I'm not gonna front. She's not that dramatic. And that's, I couldn't stand. I really could not stand that. Like what? It couldn't have just been a normal breakup. It had to be that. It had to be that. Plus now Imogen can't graduate. It was, it was too, it was too much. Okay, next up we have Mo. So I, I think Mo is funny, but I go back and forth whether I like, like him or not. I... Yeah, I think, I think he's good for Marisol. Do I? I do. Like, eh, I really go back and forth. The like getting drunk at the prom, was it? Because Marisol was trying to help you and Jake profess your very clear love for each other. I thought it was going to be like the they're actually in love thing, but it was a fun thing. And that was cute too. That was still really cute too. But Marisol just was trying to help you. And now you're angry at Marisol. Like it, he, he, he does. And you're going to get drunk with Owen 
because Mar- like it, it was it was a little bit unserious to me he's unserious sometimes he does un- like why are you telling Maya you don't look right for the part Maya's a freshman you don't you know how it's gonna like literally fuck her up in the head and look Maya put chicken cutlets in her shirt one of them fell out because of what you said to her like I mean he said okay you're in the band anyways but you still did that to her so Mo and I I go back I go I go back and forth on him I think he's funny but then he says something else and I'm like never mind you ne- never mind next up is Marisol I like Mary. I don't know. She does stuff. And I'm like, why the fuck would you do that? Why would you say that? Why would you make fun of a suicidal boy and his girlfriend? Why? And they're like three years younger than, why would you do that? Why would you do that? Why are you making fun of Imogen's dad who clearly has dementia? Why would you do that? Like, it's just so, I'm like, damn, but she's besties with Katie. So let me know what kind of person she is. But I like her and Mo. I like that she finally has a boyfriend who's not in relationship limbo. That's really, that's a new high for Marisol. She ran the school, ate that. She ran the entire school because Katie, you know, the, you know. Um, the episode where she thought Mo was doing heroin because she found needles in his bag. I, I thank God I waited because I was like, she's going to figure it out eventually. Like I was like, she has to be able to figure this out. And she did eventually when Jake literally told her, but I was like, Marisol, he's your boyfriend. Like you, like you there, you don't think there's any other reason he could have needles in his and no other reason whatsoever. That was puzzling at best, but you know, she graduated. Good for you, Marisol. You ran the whole school. Next up is Jake. Jake is ran through. Jake is ran through, but I think he's hilarious. Like I, I think he's hilarious. I think he's, I think he's funny. Like I think he's a good, like laugh, laugh, he, he, like comedic relief. Like he says funny things sometimes. And I like him and Katie together. I thought it was just gonna be because you know he's ran through. He's like the he's the pass around. I thought it was just gonna be like a cute little fling. I thought they were really cute together. I thought they like were really worked well together. He had some slight possession issues at the beginning, but that's just because he doesn't, he can't talk about his emotions. If he could have talked about his emotions like a person, he wouldn't have had that whole like, at the hockey game thing when Katie went with Dallas and like being jealous of Dallas. Like you think Katie likes Dallas, really, really? That was, that was ridiculous, but it resolved itself. I like them together. I have no other thoughts about Jake. That episode when Claire like realized how different their lives were in that house were, was hilarious. Was, that was a really funny episode because I was like, damn, he gets to smoke weed and Claire can't even drive the car. <laughs> Claire can't even drive the car. Yeah. I'm happy Jake found a little hobby being in, being in the garden, being a gardener, he loves the environment, very hippie. I'm glad he has something to do. And I think him and Katie would are going to be, I don't know what he's going to do after graduation. He seemed to be afraid of college because he didn't think he was going to get in, which was really sad. So I'm like, that's not a reason to not apply. But again, where are the adults to tell him that? Whatever, whatever, whatever. Next up is Katie. It was not Katie's season either. It was not. Her and Drew were not meant to be. It took, it took, Drew was a little bit, you know, dancing around it, but he knew that. Katie decided to blame Bianca instead when it was like, even if Bianca was not there, you and Drew are not meant to be together whatsoever. I like her with her little rebound guy. I think he's better for her. I'm not sure if it's because he doesn't put this like pressure on, I don't know if Katie felt pressured, like she had to be with a certain type of person and like Drew fit into that because he used to be like the star athlete and then he was a super popular guy and stuff. So I'm not sure if like Jake just relieved her of that pressure. Um, but the Katie who's dating Jake is a much more likable person than the Katie who was dating Drew. And you know, she also hit a pretty low point in her life before starting to date Jake. You know, the hair dye change was not was a, was a tr- interesting color, interesting color to go, 
but it represented how she was feeling inside. So whatever. Um, you know, vandalizing Bianca's car, loser beat. Like that's where Katie. It's because I thought. Because all of last season, she blamed Bianca. This season, she still blamed... I'm like, you don't... The problem can't be Drew. The problem can't be... The problem couldn't possibly be Drew. I don't know what is internalized misogyny. Because I'm like, the problem couldn't possibly be that Drew didn't like you as much as he liked Bianca and kept stringing you along to avoid his real feelings for Bianca. That couldn't possibly be the case. As I, Katie lost... Katie loses me a lot when she always like... And I think... I think it's a little racist. I think it's a, I think it's, a, I think it's a touch. I think it's a, I think it, I think she doesn't think a per, a per person like Bianca deserves somebody like Drew. And I think it goes along with the whole, like, Drew was a certain, at least, you know, before his head injury and still even after a certain type of person belongs with Katie, the per, the perfect couple. And I'm like, when has that worked out for anybody on this show? it hasn't like it's Bianca's fault that Drew doesn't like you Drew didn't like her he literally pitied her that's why he was with her the whole he literally pitied her the second she went away he went straight to Bianca he was she was in rehab he was with Bianca it's like it, it, and the, here's the thing when she put that little video clip, I don't know what she was, that little thing, that thing together and exposed the fact that Drew had sex with her she did that with the sole purpose of humiliating Bianca. She thinks she did it to humiliate Drew. That didn't humiliate Drew. Drew is Drew. That's not gonna, that's humiliating Bianca. And that's why I, I don't like Katie because she wanted, she wanted to humiliate Drew a little bit, but she wanted to humiliate Bianca more. And that's where I'm like, you lose me completely. Drew is the, is the bad guy. Drew had sex with you when he was dating Bianca. How is it now Bianca? How is Bianca still the problem? How is Bianca still the problem? So Katie vandalizes Bianca's call, car for wronging her, but Dallas walks away scot-free from destroying your garden. And I'm not saying she needed to like beat his ass, but he just gets yelled at. You vandalize Bianca's car. Like, I can't take her seriously for that. I can't, but when it comes to Bianca, Katie literally does not think straight. She does, she does, she can't, I don't know why. I know why, but I'm like, you, you can't think logically at all when Bianca's involved. And somehow Drew walks away scot-free. I don't like that. I'm looking at this foundation. Where's my mirror? Did I drop it? Oh. I think the foundation looks nice. It was definitely too dark. I bought it based off, my, I think, my summer shade. And I haven't gotten the sun in a long time, which is so sad. Like, this is not my normal... I don't like this. I don't like this. I need to be... I don't like this. Anyways, her in Vegas... Her like getting into Stanford, good for Katie, but having to like scrounge together money and th then she tries gambling. When has gambling worked out for any person on this show? <laughs> then that grown man offering her money for sex, like Katie could not catch a break whatsoever. But at least she's going to stand for now. And she tried, you tried to ruin Bianca's life so bad and look at her going to her first choice college. And she got Drew. She's engaged to Drew now. I just have to laugh a little bit at that because hey, Katie tried really, really, really hard. And she still did well for herself. But she's like, but I'm like, what is it about Drew? Like, what is it about Drew that is making you lose your mind? He's not all, he's not all that. Like, it, Ooh, it was really scary, but I'm happy that's over at least for now because that was really scary. Anyways, next up is Eli. I was on Eli's side this whole, almost this entire season. I really like Eli, I think he's hilarious. Um, I was only against Eli when he read Claire's diary. You know you're wrong for that. He knows he's wrong for that. That was like... Like you, you five, four, no, absolutely. He's got, no, but I think he has a good heart. So I do support him. I just think him and Claire need to just stop. I don't, I don't, I, this it's back and forth. It's every day back and forth. It's every day back and forth. 
mm, I think it's time to end. <laughs> Now they're back together again, but I do believe they love each other, but I'm like, it's only high school. You Like, there's so many, he's about to go to New York. Like, there's so many people in the world. I don't know if this is, if this is meant to be, because this is unhealthy for both of you. Every single time, it doesn't just end. They don't just break up. It, like, just eats a destruction. It's never just a normal breakup. It's destruction. <laughs> Like, he ate with Romeo and Jules, he ate, he ate, he's uh, two plays in a row after the, you know, the play about Claire. Two plays in a row, he's kind of like, he's done really well. I gained so much respect for him and Drake when, and I, I decided that day that I, full, I liked both their characters, when they whooped those hockey players asses. I have never been prouder. I rewatched that scene like three times. I have never been prouder of characters in my entire, cause I'm like, I'm sick of this. Cause all, cause the hockey players go like, let's get them and they beat their asses. A theater geek, mind you, and a gardener. A th I'm gonna say a theater geek and a gardener had them had them panicking she he literally went, nearly picked one of them up i was really in full support of that i was really in full support of that because the hockey players do not seem to be responding to words they don't seem to be responding to words so i really really like that like i i had never been prouder of a character except when ali fine is dumped dave this last time because rid yourself of him then he was doing so well, and then, you know, you can't, Degrassi can't ever have a lot of character, you know, have a fair time. Eli had to be the one to discover Cam. Out of all people, out of all people, Eli was the one who discovered Cam. Like, it's it's just, this show goes for, though. they're like, who, whose character would suffer the most from discovering Cam? And they picked him. It's, it's really, really sad. I just, I just don't think him and Claire are gonna work out. I don't think they're gonna, I have no faith in them staying together while he's in college. I have no faith in that whatsoever. I mean, I might, I might be wrong. I might totally be wrong, but I don't have faith in that. I think Claire, you know, I just don't know if they're meant to be together right now. Maybe I'll give them that. Maybe not right now. Maybe later, but not right now. <sighs> no, my answer is no. Next up, we have Bianca. Bianca is queenie. Bianca is everything. Bianca eats. My, this is not, I don't have an issue with Bianca anymore. Wow, we, look how far we've come. <laughs> look how, but even when I had issues with Bianca, I was always on her. She, they were always trying to fuck with her for no reason. I'm like, there are reasons to not like Bianca, but nobody would choose those reasons to mess with her. They'd choose something she can't control. Starting with Drew's damn mom. I hate Drew's mom. I hate Drew's mom. I hate Drew's mom. The way she, she, treats, she treats Drew is terrible. The way the things Drew's mom did to Bianca, she needs to be tried for her crimes against humanity. She was absolutely just getting close to Bianca to keep her eyes on Drew. And of course, Bianca didn't realize that because Bianca has been desperate for a parental figure essentially her entire fucking life because every adult in her life has failed her. The fact that Drew's mom took advantage of Bianca's vulnerability in wanting a parental figure like just disgusts me to no, to no limit, to no limit. And that's why I don't like her. And I know they're fine now, but I'm not fine. I'm not fine with it now because she that's what she was doing. And Bianca kind of realized that. And I just can't imagine the hurt she felt. She thought this woman was truly trying to help her, truly trying to help her get educated, trying to help her make something of her life. And it was just to get, just to keep an eye on Drew because she's a helicopter parent. So I know they're fine now, but Drew's mom is on my list and she is not getting off. She won't because I think that is cruel to do to anybody, but to do to somebody who you no is vulnerable in that aspect is downright wicked to me and I can't stand her and she was remind you last season or was it the season before calling Bianca all types of bitches and whores because she ruined your perfect little golden boy son who started a fight club on his damn own 
Uh, Drew's mom was on my list and I, I can't stand her and I, I will never forgive her. I won't. I will be, I will hold the grudge. If Bianca doesn't want to, I will take the responsibility and I will hold the grudge. Next up is Fiona. Lastly, we have Fiona. I love Fiona, my forever queenie. Like, look how far we've come, man. Look how far we've come. I think these writers hate women. First page in Alex, and now Fiona and Imogen just, just, it's not a normal breakup. There can never just be a normal breakup. It has to be, it has to be self-imploded like a, like nuclear bomb. It can never just be a, you're going to college, I'm staying in high school. They can never just be that. It has to be something completely chaotic leading up to that. And, 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 and I'm tired of it. And then Fiona, Fiona also couldn't catch a break this season. A stalker? She becomes Twitter famous and then leaves a GPS tag on her tweets and then a stalker. Then we're not done. <laughs> we're not done. So she has a stalker get attacked, by, almost attacked by the stalker. Then she goes to a gun range. I was already like, eh. Then she wants to buy a gun. She goes to buy a gun, realizes she needs a license and is like, I can't do that. Then she goes to literally randos on the street to buy a gun and then she gets jumped. Like, what do you mean? What, like, what, <laughs> what, what do you mean? Her mother is on house arrest. She has no money. She has to live with Drew of all people. I kind of liked that little friendship though. I thought it was hilarious. She has to live with Drew. She tries to use Imogen's mom as a replacement mom. Like, wh what, what? And then, so I read the Degrassi wiki to like help me write my notes for this and I saw, I like read in the trivia so that this is the last time we're gonna see Fiona. If that's fucking true, I'm really, really angry. I'm really, really angry because all we've been through and that's it, I get to see her graduate and I don't get to see anybody else after, I don't get to see her after. If that's true, I'm really fucking upset. Like, I'm gonna be sick. Like, this girl thought she couldn't survive without Holly J and graduated as the valedictorian. Oh, look at all we have fucking been through. She ate that, I love Fiona. And if we never see her again, I'm gonna be sick. I'm gonna, like, I'd be abs I'm gonna be absolutely sick. Like, absolutely sick. Um, so I'm trying to be in denial about that, but I don't, I don't know why that Degrassi with it would be wrong. Um, but anyways, that's everybody. Um, this show is so much. This show is so much, but I love it. I love it. It is so much, but I, I don't think, I have never seen a better show. <laughs> like, I think everybody, if you didn't watch Degrassi as a kid, cause Degrassi literally helps me with things. Like, so that ep, like, like Jane, whoa, throwback. Jane, that, oh my God, when Allie and Claire were like little, um, that episode where like they had like the vibrator and stuff and Jane was talking about like not feeling shame about that. I was like, I think 19 when I watched that. That literally like did help. Years of Catholic school, fuck it, 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 it shit on all of that. Like Degrassi is great. I have issues with the way they handled Campbell's suicide, but I don't think it was unrealistic for how people view. I just wish they could have, someone on the show could have said, Campbell is not selfish. Like Campbell was hurt, deeply, deeply hurt and thought this was the only way out. Like he is not a selfish per, he is a broken, hurt and failed child who felt that this was the only way out. That's the only thing I would change about this whole season, but like some good life lessons. And I learn a lot from watching Degrassi. Anyways, my favorite um, couples, cause I do this every Degrassi video, Fiona and Imogen. Duh. I wouldn't consider Marisol and Mo a favorite, but I like them. I did like Kate and Katie and Jake though. I just think they're boring enough to be together and they're they're just boring enough to match with each other. You know, yeah. I like Eli and Claire, but if I was a guidance counselor at that school, I would make them stay hundred feet away from each other. How when like it, it, every single time it ends in 
turbulence. Every single, when have they ever end, ended things amicably? When we, we he he writes a play about her, then he you, he discovers a dead body, and obviously has to deal with all of that, and then is like, no, you don't listen to me, and he he gagged her so bad. He that scene, he got her so he said, you don't listen to me, and she doesn't, and she doesn't. Like I just no, worst couples, worst couple is Jenna and Connor, and then Allie and Dave. I can't. Both of those need to be over effective immediately. But I'm excited to watch season 13. I don't want to. I, I don't want to see new people. I don't. <laughs> That's why every time I have to like start a new season, I'm like scared. I don't want new people. I can't deal because Maya, Zeke, and all of them just came and look at how much commotion they've brought. I have to make space for more. I don't have the space, but I'm gonna watch it because I, this show is, is a little a little too good, a little too good. So anyways, that is my Degrassi season 12 video. Let me know what your thoughts on Degrassi season 12 are. If you watched it like when it was on or if just watched it recently, let me know like how, I cannot imagine watching this show having to wait a week between each episode. I, <laughs> I'm literally terrified thinking about that, having to wait a week. And did you have to wait a week in between, like there was part one of the episode, part two, was it a week in between those or did both of those air at the same time? Cause if it was a week in between, huh, I hope it was not. But anyways, let me know your thoughts. And again, if you would like to follow me on any social media or join my Patreon, the link is in the description. And yeah, thank you guys so very much for watching and I will see you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.